Welcome to Tremento. Tremento is a wealthy tropical paradise and prime holiday destination with its long beaches, diverse wildlife and exotic markets. Tremento does not just specialise in short-term tourism, but has become the ideal location for those looking to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city. To facilitate the amenities of this lifestyle, Tremento has an incredibly strong financial sector, led by their own reserve bank called The Reserve. However, with such a wealthy finance sector, it does attract some not-so-welcome guests. Therefore, the government of Tremento has asked you to perform a red team engagement against the reserve to test their security and help identify any potential weaknesses. The reserve in its entirety is considered in scope for this engagement, including both the corporate and bank divisions. And almost all attacker techniques are allowed, including phishing of employees and other social engineering attacks. To show impact of a compromise to the executives, the government has set the engagement goal of compromising the back-end banking system, named SWIFT, and performing a payment between two bank accounts. SWIFT is responsible for routing payments between various different banks and is therefore a critical system to allow tourists to transfer their capital in and out of the country. However, this is easier said than done. To ensure fraudulent transactions cannot be performed, a Four Eyes mechanism has been introduced, which requires one employee to capture the transaction and another to approve it. Are you up for the task? Are you ready for the challenge? Can you hack the bank? Boom, and it is time. What is up, hey ladies everyone. and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video. Good here to have on you hanging out with me. Oh, I am John. Hey, there we go. Try hacking this playing in the background. Now, now you guys should be able to hear me. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for joining my stream. We are going to dive into the Red Team Capstone Challenge. If you don't know who I am, my name is Tyler, and I get to be the one hanging out with you this evening. As we get into it, let me just share with you guys a little bit about what to expect. First, um, I'm going to ask you guys again because I have no way of monitoring my audio. For those of you watching on stream right now, if you can let me know if everything sounds good to you, if everything looks good. I shared before that I am a one-man team, and that's what I am. My Kali Linux VM just stopped working because we are live, and that's how things work, but that's fine. I'll boot that up in the background as I do a quick intro, but hopefully everything sounds good. Here's my plan for not just this stream but for the future i am going to attempt guys to stream like every night through the month of may will i be able to accomplish it i have no idea um and i'll be starting around this time each night it'll be around eight o'clock or 8 30 central time the reason for the time change y'all is i have two young kids and it all depends on when i can get both my kids in bed and i can get everything booted up and ready to stream but that is my plan so if you join me around this time most nights you will find me on working through this challenge, get everything booted up in the background. Here's the other thing I want you guys to know, just so you don't set your expectations too high. I am not like a super elite hacker. So a little bit about my background. I am a pen tester, but I haven't been a pen tester that long and I am a web app pen tester. So everything I do for the most part is web applications, things in that world. I know a little bit about AD. I do have things like the OSCP, but I am not, uh, elite hackers. If you're coming here to learn like really cool hacking tips, you're probably going to be disappointed. And I assure you guys, I will get stuck on this network. I will get frustrated, but we will work through it together. And here's how I want to see it. We have right now about 30 online with me. We're all sitting in one room together. So you guys feel free to sound off in the chat. I'll keep my eye on the chat. If you have ideas as we're working through this, talk as much as you want, and we'll try your ideas as well, right? So I'm just, I'm the guy on the keyboard, but we can do this together. Especially if you don't have the Try Hack Me streak, you can live through the network through me, and we will take down the bank. I do want to give a special shout out to my friend Amoeba Man. He is the creator of this network and in many ways the creator of my career. I met Amoeba Man. Oh man, it's been a while now. When I was working in IT support and I wanted to get into pen testing, I was streaming some of the AD networks by Try Hack Me and posting them on YouTube and some dude joined and was helping me and I found out he was the one who 
made the networks and we kind of struck up a friendship from there and in many ways he's been a mentor and I'm pretty sure the dude hasn't slept. He's watched all these streams. It's like 3 a.m. where he lives, and he says he goes to work in a couple of hours. So, Amoeba Man, dude, you're you're the real MVP uh, in this thing. The other thing, guys, I have a cold, right? So I'm a little bit sick. Uh, I feel better than I have the rest of the week, though. But if I cough and stuff, I apologize ahead of time. I don't think I will, but that's the price of having kids is they they constantly get me sick. Okay, I think that's everything I have by way of introduction. I'm going to share my screen and turn myself back on in the top right corner. And let's go ahead and boot it up. I told you my Kali VM broke just for a second, so I just need to open up Try Hack Me again. And if you are following along, I would encourage you to follow along with me. Go ahead and log in to Try Hack Me. You can see that we're already here to the Red Team Capstone Challenge. And we are going to do some bank hacking. I don't know where my Mr. Robot mask went. If I had my Mr. Robot mask, I would definitely pull it out just for the inspiration. I feel like we are F Society taking down this federal bank of whatever the government. I forgot the government name already, but such a cool video by Try Hack Me. Cool platform, cool stuff. Network is already started, so it looks like we should be good there. I don't think I can extend it. You can only increase it for a maximum of two hours. Well, it's not two hours yet, but whatever. It probably has to be less than one hour, and then we can do it. And here's the other thing, guys. If you ever join me for my regular streams, here's what I do that's a little bit different than most of the content creators you stumble across on YouTube. A lot of people go through a network or a machine on Try Hack Me or Hack the Box. They do it offline. Then they jump on stream, and they complete the machine in like 10 minutes. And you're like, hey, how the heck did you know what to do in each one of those parts? That's not what I do, guys. So when I work through a machine on stream, I am doing it completely live. This is my first reaction to each thing that we're going to see. I have not prepped this ahead of time, either this one or my other stream. So hopefully you learn from my thought process, you learn from my methodology, and you learn from my frustrations, and we learn from this together. So we'll be a team, right? I always tell my kids, teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, all right, without any further ado, let me get a drink of water, and then we'll dig into it. All right, we're going to read everything in its entirety. We're not going to skim. I've learned from experience skimming usually means you miss stuff and Amoeba Man told me make sure you read everything. So, we're going to we're going to read everything. Let's learn what we can learn. Welcome to the Red Team Learning Pathway Capstone Challenge. I want to pause here, guys. Um because I've seen some people in the Try Hack Me Discord like confused on a few different things on here because they haven't done this yet. So this is supposed to be the capstone for the red teaming pathway. The red teaming pathway, my friends, is massive. It covers everything from red team fundamentals, initial access, post compromise, host evasions, network security evasion, compromising AD. If you extend these, each one of these are networks, um, challenges, machines, okay? Look at that, guys. I'm at 100% path progress. So I would just say if you are stuck on a spot on the red team capstone network, just know it is supposed to be a capstone. Uh, if you follow the right order, you should go through the red team pathway and then do the capstone network. So if you're stuck, go back and look at these resources here. Even if you don't do them, use this as kind of a place to search through when you're struggling with stuff. We'll, we'll do that ourselves. And I think that'll be a good way to approach the room. I'm saying that as someone who hasn't done the room yet. So I might be completely wrong, but that's my perspective. If you are reading this, we hope you're ready to apply and test the knowledge that you have gained from the learning pathway. This is an in-depth network challenge simulating a red team engagement. The challenge includes several phases structured around the cyber kill chain that will require you, us, remember teamwork makes a dream work. We need a cool hacker name. Well, I guess we are Hack Smarter. We are the Hack Smarter hacking crew. Require you to enumerate a perimeter, breach the organization, uh, perform lateral movement, and finally perform goal execution to show impact. And guys, here's the difference between a red team engagement and a, a CTF, right? A CTF is often, hey, just get root or an active director, get domain admin. But a red team engagement, there's a goal to execute at the end. So getting like DA is merely a means to the end. That's not the end goal. We have to perform a fraudulent transaction, if I remember right. So we'll have to research the SWIFT banking system, see how that works. So just know our focus is on goal execution. This is not a typical CTF. To best simulate how these engagements usually occur, there is no single right answer. Instead, there are multiple ta tasks paths that can be used to achieve the final goal. Man, I should have done a swag giveaway. Y'all see this shirt? I'm, I'm going to show you guys my sweet shirt. Every time I get a chance to show it off, I have to. There we go, guys. Custom made 
by yours truly, Hack Smarter. This is the only one in existence. Um, if anyone wants a Hack Smarter shirt, message me and I'll tell you how I made it. I'll, I'll just send you the design, but this is the only one. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Competition. Please see task four for the competition. We are running until the 31st of May, 2023. So we'll check that out. Test and learning objectives. We're going to do some OSINT simulated, enumeration and fuzzing, phishing, AV evasion, lateral movement, AD exploitation, Linux and Windows security testing, privilege escalation, and post-compromise exploitation. A word from the challenge author. So this is from Amoeba Man. And I will just say, guys, if you have not met Amoeba Man, he's a cool dude. If you go to my YouTube channel, which if you just type Tyler Ramsby in YouTube, it's not Hex Murder, but type Tyler Ramsby in YouTube, you'll find it. He and I have made a couple of videos. Uh, we made a video where he guides us through how to set up your own Active Directory hacking lab using, was it? Terraform. I don't remember which platform we use now that I'm going off the top of my head. We also have another one where he just shares his journey, how he got into pen testing. So check out those videos. All right, a word from the challenge author. This room is rated as hard, but because it is a mountain that lies ahead of you, it could have been rated as insane. That's encouraging. However, when you break it down into various stages of compromise that you have to achieve, no single one of these stages is actually hard. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> they just require attention to detail, which is pretty hard, and sound application of the knowledge you should have learned by doing the red team learning pathway. Normal red team engagements last weeks and even sometimes months. Take this into consideration as you tackle the challenge. This network was created to simulate what you would typically find on a real client engagement during a red team. None of the attack paths in this challenge were created as a fictional CTF. Guys, I just wanna highlight this again. When we look at this network up here, and we'll dive into it more once we get IPs, each one of these aren't like separate CTF. So for example, the, the information we get out of this machine right here, whether it's a web server or whatever, we might need that information to compromise this machine up here. So even when we get root or um, NT system on one of these machines, we need to perform post compromise enumeration, look for creds, and all of it might add up in the end. I'm saying that as much as for me as for you. Instead, you will find misconfigurations of vulnerabilities that I have personally seen during engagements. However, you will also face the real challenges that I had to face with certain tools or techniques simply not working out of the box or having to use ingenuity to get something to behave in the way that you want it to. Now, in a real pen testing team, you can ask the senior pen testers when you get stuck. So even my question is, are you the senior pen tester I get to ask questions to when I get stuck? That would make it more realistic, right? Uh, similarly, on real engagements, the answer was never to pick up the phone and tell the client that, hey, yo, I can't compromise this host because, you know, the tool I'm using says XYZ error. <laughs> I simply would not cut it. Very true. The answer was to start a debug process to try and understand what was different and to leverage this knowledge to adapt to be able to still perform the attack. Some advice for me is you scale this mountain. All right. What do you guys say, man? Firstly, make sure to properly read through the information provided. This information is to help you avoid attempting this as a CTF, which can cause frustration. Secondly, this challenge has multiple compromises per stage. If you get stuck on trying to get a specific attack to work, my suggestion would be to perform additional enumeration to try and discover other attack paths as well. That's what I'm really looking forward to. I don't know about you guys, what drives me crazy about CTFs is there is only one way to compromise a machine. Now, that didn't actually drive me that crazy until I got into real pen testing, but like, for example, web app pen testing, we're doing much more than just trying to get RCE on a web app. We're looking at the whole thing holistically we're, we're researching different technologies. There's a lot of different ways that you can approach an assessment, but a CTF, it's like, hey, there's this one obscure thing on GitHub that you have to find and modify the code to get code execution. This one obscure thing you have to do to do privilege escalation, not realistic. There, there are multiple attack paths. I'm looking forward to that aspect of it. Find your very own golden path to complete the challenge once, then go back and try to conquer other attack paths as well. Um, just glancing over the chat so I don't miss you guys. Amoeba said, nope, even I will ask others with more knowledge in the office for help. SV Doe says, hey, yo, what's up, dude? J Money said, question Amoeba Man, why is there a time on this box? Is there a reason for the time? Oh, yeah, so J Money, I'll, I'll answer this question real quick. Amoeba Man, feel free to correct me if I misstate this. So if you guys even just look at this machine, I believe there's 14 hosts here, and it 
is not cheap or easy to have the infrastructure to host all of this for the thousands of people who are going to be accessing this. So what's going to happen with the Red Team Capstone Challenge is a few requirements to access to it right now. You need to first be a paid subscriber on Try Hack Me, which if you're not, get it. It's it's well worth your time. Even without this network, Try Hack Me is incredible, right? So get that VIP membership. And the second requirement, at least right now, is you need a seven-day streak to access the network. So if you don't have that seven-day streak, start building it up. You still have the rest of the month of May to dive into it. Now, at the end of those 24 days... It's going to be available to try hack me business customers. So if you have a business or if your business wants to learn more about hands-on cybersecurity or pen testing, get a business account. Um, I don't have one yet, but I'm working on getting one. They cover everything from blue team to red team. They also teach AWS pen testing on the business side of it. And this network will be available for business customers. So um, I know I don't make the decisions. Amoeba Man also doesn't make those decisions, but it's part of the cost of hosting all this infrastructure. It's just not possible in many ways to give this out to everyone. Amoeba Man, please let me know if I said anything wrong in my explanation there. Oh, it actually was going to explain it here. I should have just kept reading. Jeez. See, I told you guys I don't. I haven't read this ahead of time. Um, most important to remember to conquer this capstone challenge. This is a practice practice exercise for red teaming, not a capture the flag game. Your CTF skills alone will not be sufficient to complete the challenge. The exercise tests the skills you learn in the red team learning path. We recommend com com completing at least 80% of this path before attempting the challenge. I've done 100%, but I'll still get stuck. If you get stuck, go back to the path as it covers the techniques you need. Look, I already said that, guys. I should have written this. There are different ways to complete this exercise. If you have trouble with a specific attack, try different approaches and avenues and carefully read task two, the project brief as it contains crucial info you will need to complete the challenge. Scriber only. Okay, here's what it was. I'm just going to read this and make sure I didn't miss anything. The Red Team Capstone Challenge Network you just joined will be available to subscribers until June 5th. After this data will become exclusive to users on our business plan. We warmly encourage you to take part in the challenge and make the most of this opportunity. And we hope you find this challenge network to be a valuable experience. To keep everyone on the same page, please refer to this timer to keep track of when we're making the switch. We appreciate your participation in our community. And as always, we will keep you updated on any future opportunities and perks. Now, if you guys want business access, um, I'm trying to get the firm I work for to get a business account with try hack me. But if they end up not doing it, yeah, I'm not kidding. I'm making a hack smarter business <laughs> just for this, but it takes a minimum of five seats. So if there's more of you who want a business account and I end up going that path, just like follow me and I'll post on discord like, Hey, come join the hack smarter business and we're going to make our own business plan so we can get access to it. We appreciate your participation in our community, and as always, we will keep you updated on any future opportunities and perks. Note that the X days of access next to the room title refers to the time you have left in your particular network instance. We need to clear those up periodically to ensure a good user experience, but rest assured you'll be able to return to the room for as long as it's open to subscribers. Okay, looking over at the chat, Amoeba Man is just answering questions. Jay Money said, Tyler, are you going to put this recording on your YouTube channel? Yes, I, it'll be going on YouTube. So each one of these streams, guys, I will be streaming this evening. As soon as the stream is done, I'm recording this right now with OBS to my local computer. And as soon as we're done, I'll start uploading it to YouTube. So at the end of each stream, you should see the full recording from that stream the next day. I'll do my best to keep up with that. All right. I am ready to start my capstone challenge journey. Are we ready, team? I'm going to pretend like I heard you guys all say yes even though I'm sitting in my basement all alone where I can pretend like you guys are hanging out with me so it feels like I have friends. Project Brief. This section details the project brief for the challenge. The challenge is an end-to-end -end red team engagement that you need to perform. Please make sure to read this information as it also provides you with details you need to start your challenge journey. Let's download this. This video is just a video, guys, I played kind of as my trailer when my countdown hit zero. So if you weren't here in the beginning, you missed out. But it just explains kind of what we're doing and the end goal. It was the video they released. I'm going to read through this page. Then we will look at the Capstone Challenge resources. And actually, what we should do, if I see you try to hack me, we'll make directory and we'll just call it Red Team, Red Team Capstone. And then I'll copy from home. Tyler downloads. Um, what was it called? I don't remember what the file was called. 
capstone challenge. You guys see that Secrets in the Cloud? That's uh, a new Cloud Goat scenario coming out soon. Stay tuned for that for those of you who follow Cloud Goat. Okay, there are my capstone challenge resources. So we'll unzip that. Oh, it probably is going to tell me the password in a little bit. Let's keep reading. All right, project overview. <clears throat> Try hack me. We're going to replace with this Hack Smarter because that's who we are. Hack Smarter, a cybersecurity consultancy firm, has been approached by the government of Trimento to perform a red team engagement against the Reserve Bank, the Reserve. We'll just call that FSSI. No, not FSSI. Who's FSSI to hack? Evil Corp, right? This is Evil Corp. Trimento is an island country situated in the Pacific. While they may be small in size, they are by no means not wealthy due to foreign investment. That means all the rich people are putting their money there to evade taxes. That's what that tells me. The Reserve Bank has two main divisions. Corporate, the Reserve Bank of Trimento allows foreign investment, so they have a department that takes care of the country's corporate banking clients. And bank, the Reserve Bank of Trimento is in charge of the core banking system in the country, which connects to other banks around the world, which must be where the SWIFT stuff is in play. The Trimento government has stated that the assessment will cover the entire Reserve Bank, including both its perimeter and internal networks. They are concerned that the corporate division, while boosting the economy, may be endangering the core banking system due to insufficient segregation. The outcome of this red team engagement will determine whether the corporate division should be spun off in its own company. Project Goal. The purpose of this assessment is to evaluate whether the corporate division can be compromised and, if so, determine if it could compromise the bank division. And we're going to say yes. We're going to go after it. A simulated fraudulent money transfer must be performed to fully demonstrate the compromise. Let's do it. To do this safely, the reserve will create two new core banking accounts for you, for us. You will need to demonstrate that it's possible to transfer funds between these two accounts. The only way this is possible is by gaining access to SWIFT, the core back-end banking system. Note SWIFT, Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications, <laughs> is the actual system that is used by banks for back-end transfers. In this assessment, a core back-end system has been created. However, for security reasons, intentional inaccuracies have been introduced in this process. If you wish to learn more about actual SWIFT and its security, feel free to go do some research. To put in other words, the information that follows here has been made up. I'm being man's trying to get stop the NSA from coming after him. To help you understand the project goal, the government of Trimento has shared some information about the SWIFT backend system. SWIFT runs in an isolated, secure environment with restricted access. While the word impossible should not be used lightly, the likelihood of the compromise of the actual hosting infrastructure is so slim that it's fair to say that it is impossible to compromise this infrastructure. However, the SWIFT backend exposes an internal web application. <sighs> okay, guys, we need to be taking notes. Um, one second, I need to do a few things. One, you guys have to look at my face for a second because I need to make sure I open the right notebook. Okay. Notebook is open. Let me go back to sharing my screen. Uh, let's see. Oh, you guys don't need to see that. That's for a hack the box active machine. I don't want hack the box to get in trouble for me. So don't look at that here. We'll go over to this. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead and start taking notes. And I wonder the best way to do this. I'm just going to create a new section and we'll call it Trimento like that. And here is where we're going to fill out some of our information. So what I like to do, at least when I'm doing an assessment, is copy down some of the main notes that we have. And we have here. I'm going to pull this to my other screen. One of the first things that I want to copy down is we have this internal web application. So we know that this is in scope. So let's go ahead and grab this. And we'll just say notes for now we'll organize this later but for now let's just get our information down so here's our web application <clears throat> and what does it say it does the swift backend system exposes it. so exposed by the swift back end system we know that and the reserve uses it to facilitate transfers facilitates transfers i obviously can't spell the government has provided a general process for transfer. So transfer funds. All right. So here's the transfer process. 
Hopefully I can just copy this. A customer makes a request that funds should be transferred and receives a transfer code. The customer contacts the bank and provides this transfer code. An employee with a capture role. Okay, hold up. A customer, I'm trying to understand everyone involved in this. A customer makes a request that funds should be transferred, receives a transfer code. Okay, so the customer does it, they receive a code. The customer then contacts a bank and provides this code. An employee with the capture role, so this must be like a specific role, they have permissions of certain things, almost like an AD role, with the capture role authenticates to the SWIFT application and captures the transfer, hence their name. An employee with the approval role reviews the transfer details and a verified approves the transfer. This has to be performed from a jump host once approval for the transfer is received by the SWIFT network, the transfer is facilitated and what the customer is notified. So we have customer, transfer code, employee one, employee two, a jump host, a jump box to make it. All right. Separation of duties is performed to ensure that no single employee can both capture and approve the same transfer. Honestly, better security than most real places. Let's go ahead and copy this. And we'll see if it lets me. There we go. Yeah, it looks nice. So we know the transfer process here. Separation of duties is performed to ensure that no single employee can both capture and approve the same transfer. Project scope. This is the other thing that is going to be important for us to take note of. So we'll want to copy this down in our notes as we go through it. So we'll say in scope. First, we'll just read it, then I'll copy it down. In scope. Security testing of the reserve's internal and external networks, including all IP ranges accessible through your VPN connection. Ocenting of the reserve's corporate website, which is exposed on the external network of the reserve. So we're probably looking for usernames, job titles, emails, things like that. Note this means that all OSINT activity should be limited to the provided network subnet and no external internet OSINTing is required. What about messaging Amoeba Man asking questions? Maybe we'll trick him. Uh, phishing of any of the employees of the reserve uh, is in scope. Okay, so phishing is in scope. So there must be a bot that clicks it. That'll be cool. Attacking the mailboxes of the reserve employees on the webmail host. Ooh, so we know that that's the webmail host. We'll want to record that. Using any attack methods to complete the goal of performing the transaction between the provided accounts. So basically, almost everything is in scope. We can't physically go to the government trimental and break in. But other than that, everything seems to be in scope. Uh, oh, it is bullet points. Okay. And just a word on this, guys. If you do real pen testing, or if you want to get into real pen testing, one of the things that you may not realize the importance of is scope. So if you're used to doing CTFs, your scope is like, hey, just fire off, go ahead and get root, whatever it looks like. When you're doing a real assessment, you have to remember that you're attacking a real company, a real business. And the difference between us and criminals is we have ethics and we follow what is in scope and out of scope. So when you do your first assessment, there's a few things you want to pay attention to. The big thing is scope. What attacks can you perform? What attacks should you not perform? Usually part of that scope is sensitive data, maybe sensitive endpoints, sensitive things they don't want you to scan, they don't want you to hit. Um, things like that will be in scope, out of scope. You want to make note of that, come back to it. You'll usually know whether it's a production environment or a QA or dev environment. Obviously, if it's QA or dev, you have a lot more freedom on the attacks that you perform, but you want to make absolutely certain you know the scope when you perform a real assessment. So I do like about this that it provides us with the scope and brings kind of that, that realism factor to it. Out of scope. Security testing of any sites not hosted on the network. All right. Security testing the TriHackMe VPN <laughs> scoring servers or attempts to attack any other user connected to the network. I'm coming after you guys. Any security testing in the webmail server that alters the mail server configuration or its underlying infrastructure. Attacking the mailboxes of other red teamers on the webmail portal. All right, you guys are going to see my web box and my IP. Don't break the rules and attack me, right? Uh, external OSINT gathering. Atta that just means internet. Um... <laughs> Uli loves his F scopes. We're going full in. I like the attitude. Attacking any host outside of the provided subnet range. Once you have completed the questions below, your subnet will be displayed in the network diagram. This 10 24 network is the only in scope network for this challenge. And conducting DOS attacks or any attack that runs as a network and operable for other users. Okay, that all makes sense. I don't think I'll accidentally fall out of scope. If I do, we got some issues. You know, I should probably get connected to the VPN as well. I did already download the VPN connection. So if you haven't done that, 
you can go ahead and get that downloaded. I believe it guides you through the process. Basically, if you go to your access and then you have to click networks to get to the right VPN, sudo open VPN. I think I renamed it red team. Yeah. All right, we're on. You guys see my IP? All right, remember the rules. Don't attack my IP. Project tools. In order to perform the project, the government of Trimental has decided to disclose some information and provide <laughs> the other wrinkle said too late. I'm going to get my connections. It's going to stop. The government of Trimental has decided to disclose some information and provide some tools that might be useful for the exercise. Leon says already in map scanning. I love it. You do not have to use these tools and are free to use whatever you prefer. If you used to use, I'm going to stuffed up. If <laughs> Leon says use Cali Cali, I actually do not use Cali Cali. This is a custom Cali image, not just their typical one. If you wish to use this information and tools, you can either find them on the attack box in a root rooms capstone challenge or download them as a task file using the blue button at the top of the task above the video. If you download them as a task file, use the password of capstone. That's what we're looking for to extract zip. What do we got here? Oh, we got password base list, password policy. Ooh, bunch of cool tools. Looking over the chat, someone says he uses Tyler Cali. Leon says Tyler Rhino, Tyler Rhino Smart. It's just Tyler Tyler. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Not Cali Cali, Tyler Tyler. That's how I do it. I should open SSH on my box and see if you guys can connect to it, but then we'll be breaking the <laughs> what's in scope and out of scope. Oh, man. A note that these tools will be flagged as malware on Windows machines. Well, we're not on a Windows machine. For the provided password policy that requires a special character, the characters can be restricted to the following. So if we cat the password policy, the password pol policy for the reserve is the following, at least eight characters long, one number, one special character. The characters are restricted to those. Okay. Note, if your network goes offline while you are working, please refresh the room page before clicking the start button again. If you click extend instead, instead you will place a network in a locked state where the timer first has to run out before you can restart the network. All right. Let me remember that. If your network goes offline while you are working, please refresh the room page before clicking the start button again. If you click extend instead, okay. I think I did this once on stream and uh, we fixed it by doing the sweet. Can I extend now? The sweet hack. Oh, no, I can't. All right. I might just have to start it if it dies on us. Yeah, maybe I said maybe good to extend your network now. Well, look, dude, it doesn't extend. But maybe I should refresh the page quick. Oh, it extended. I just had to refresh. We're good. We're at one hour. 36 minutes. All right. We got project tools patching in. All right. Going into the matrix. Let's do this thing before we do that guys get your black hood up that's what real hackers do all right if your network goes offline while you're working please refresh the room page we already read that if you use the attack box we don't you can verify blah 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 you are however welcome to use your own machine should you wish to do so go to your access page oh that's just how to get the vpn we did that we did that Project registration. The Trimento government mandates that all red teamers from TriHackMe participating in the challenge must register to allow their single point of contact for the engagement to track activities. As the island's network is segregated, this also provides the testers access to an email account for communication with the government and an approved phishing email address. Let's go! Should phishing be performed? To register, you need to get in touch with the government through its e-citizen communication portal that uses SSH for communication. Here are the SSH details for that are provided. Let's go ahead and grab this down because if the network resets, I'm guessing we may have to redo this process. So we'll drop that stuff in there. So we have to SSH in password and set up our account. Once you complete the questions below, the network diagram at the start of the room will show the IP specific to your network. Use that information to replace the X values in your SSH IP. Got it. 
Once you authenticate, you will be able to communicate with the eCitizen system. Follow the prompts to register for the challenge and save the information you get for future reference. Once registered, follow the instructions to verify that you have access to all the relevant systems. The VPN server and the eCitizen platform are not in scope for this assessment, and any security testing of these systems may lead to a ban from the challenge, especially if you do it live on stream. As you make your way through the network, you will need to prove your compromises. In order to do that, you will be requested to perform specific steps on the host that you have compromised. Please note the host mains in the network diagram above, as you will need this information. Flags can only be accessed from matching hosts, so even if you have higher access, you will need to lower your access to the specific host required to submit the flag. All right, lateral movement. If the network has been reset or if you have joined a new subnet after your time in the network expired, your eCitizen account will remain active. Oh, cool. I was thinking I had to redo that. However, you will need to request that the system recreates your mailbox for you. This can be done by authenticating the eCitizen and then selecting the option three. Summary. Please make sure you understand the points below before starting. If any point is unclear, please reread this task. All right. Or I'll message Amoeba Man. He'll get annoyed with me. Number one. The purpose of this assessment is to evaluate whether the corporate division can be compromised, and if so, determine if it can result in the compromise of the bank division. Perfect, and we'll, we'll copy this into our notes as well. My wife is sneaking around. What are you doing? I had an intruder in my hacking workspace. All right. <laughs> to demonstrate the compromise... A simulated fraudulent money transfer must be performed by gaining access to the SWIFT core backend banking system. The SWIFT backend infrastructure is secure but exposes an internal web app used by the reserve to facilitate transfers. A general process for transfers involves a separation of duties. Hood's too hot, y'all. I can't be a hacker. That one employee cannot both capture and approve the same transfer. Got it? You have been provided with some information and tools that you may find helpful in the exercise, including a password policy, but you're free to use your own. There are rules in place that determine what you are allowed and disallowed to do. Failure to adhere to these rules might result in a ban from the challenge. That's how I picture them saying the word ban. After gaining access to the network, you need to register for the challenge through eCitizen communication portal using provided SSH details. You will need to prove compromises by performing specific steps on the host that you have compromised. These steps will be provided to you through the eCitizen portal, but don't hack the eCitizen portal. I understand the project, have read the scope, complete. I have registered for the challenge and verified that my access is working. Uh, no. Uh, wasn't there a step I have to do to see my IP range? Maybe I need to keep going. I think I said the next step, but we'll just say I have. Let's keep going. In order to prove that you have compromised the estate, the government of Trimento requires that you interface with the eCitizen platform from specific locations in the network. Once you compromise a host, you should initiate an SSH connection to the eCitizen platform and perform the requested action to pr prove the compromise. So every compromise we do that, it's kind of like the OSCP when you submit you know, flags and IPs and all that fun stuff, after which a flag will be provided that you can submit below. There may be several paths to compromise hosts, so you could receive the same flag on different hosts. To get new flags, you need to compromise additional hosts and systems. The flags indicate progress in the challenge and lead to goal execution. Donkey said, is this the new THM challenge? It is the new THM challenge. And what up, Morehouse Hacks? Thank you for rating with four Appreciate it. We got like 50 people here, guys. We have grown the Hack Smarter hacking team to 50 of us. All right, we're all on a team together. Let's let's do this. In other words, if you reach the level of access that will allow final goal execution, that level of access will also allow you to get all the other flags. All right, notes. Flags are provided both for the initial foothold, which is low privilege, and full compromise, administrative access. We're going DA in one night. Just kidding. I'd probably be stuck. <laughs> in certain cases, your foothold may also directly provide administrative access. That's what I'm going to do. In these cases, make the submission for the administrative access flag and then use this level of access to make the submission for the initial low bridge foothold as well. The flags are not in any particular order. You may find that your compromise path allows you to submit flags in a different order than what is listed below. Let the heist begin. So you're breaching the perimeter, AD, corporate division tier two. Just glancing at these. So we have different tiers on here. So this is, we have to go tier one, tier two, tier zero. Parent domain, parent domain, is there a child domain? I wonder if we'll get to abuse like trust between the two domains. 
Oh, okay. Competition. Lingirl said he read a book for 45 minutes. That's what I'm good at, dude. <laughs> I will say we are doing a lot of reading and we're going to spend a lot of time doing enumeration, guys. But surely this is realistic. When you do a real assessment, it's not all just elite hacking. You have to slow down and make sure you understand what you are doing. To celebrate the launch of the Red Team Capsule Challenge, I'll be hosting the competition. Oh, these are just the competition. Swiftest hacker, make all the way to flag 20. That's not going to be me. Red Team Challenge the right way. We have to document. Oh, so we can submit a write-up. How about submitting a stream-up? Does that count? We have prizes. Answer the questions below. Put me in coach. Okay, sweet. Now we have IPs. So that was what we had to answer to get to the IPs. Fantastic. So what we have so far is we have a web right here. That's that exposed web portal. We have a VPN. We have a we have a VPN webmail. So we have three hosts here. And then we have to get past the DMZ firewall and do some sweet kind of pivoting type stuff, which means one of these hosts might have a couple of IPs on them. All right, well, the first thing we have to do, guys, is register, which I believe it talked about it here. Let's look at our IP range. So we're 10, 200, 113, okay? So let's go ahead and take note of the host that we have. And the way we'll do this is we'll set up this host. We'll just call it web server 10.200.113.13, like that. We have our VPN. 10.200.113.12. We have our mail server. 10.200.113.11. And then we need to get past the DMZ. But it looks like we're going to be compromising these first, or one of them, or maybe if we compromise one, we can get past the DMZ right away. Maybe we can do some sweet phishing stuff. I don't know. But the first thing we do need to do is register our account with those SSH creds, which I think I actually dropped in my notes, didn't I? If you go back to my notes here, here they are. So this would be for us 10.200.113.250. So that's the first thing that we need to do. I'm just going to pull this over to my other screen and we'll see if we can do this. So SSH e citizen at 10.200.113.250 like that and stability through currency welcome to the e-citizen platform please make a selection register authenticator exit and we can't hack this remember so we're going to register please provide your thm i don't even know my thm username tenebrae something Uh, Tenebrae 93. Okay. Thank you for registering an e-citizen for the red team engagement against the reserve. Please take note of the following details. This will not be displayed again. Okay. Let's take note of this as they will not be displayed again. Copy that. And I'm going to drop these in my notes here. We'll just start a page. We'll just call us creds for now. So there are creds. You guys can go ahead and log in as me now if you want. The details are now active. As you can see, we have already purchased a domain for domain squatting to be used for phishing. Ah, beautiful. We got our elite three in there. Trick those employees. Once you discover the webmail server, you can use these details to authenticate and recover additional project information from your mailbox, which we have the webmail server. We should figure out how to authenticate to it. Once you perform actions to compromise the network, please authenticate to eCitizen in order to provide an update to the government. If your update is sufficient, you will be awarded a flag to indicate progress. Please note once again that the eCitizen platform and this VPN server are not in scope for this assessment. Any attempts made against this machine will result in a ban from the challenge. Best of luck, and may you hack the bank. Let's go, guys. I already feel like a real hacker. Um, let's see, we have this Swift backend exposed an internal web application. What we want to do is add that to our Etsy host file, which I have it right here. And we'll just drop this there. 
copy this IP first. Oh, not, not that. I don't have terminal open there. And let's add that to Etsy host. That's just so it resolves that. Pseudo mousepad Etsy host. That's where I type in Tyler Tyler. We're using the root account. Heck yeah, we are. That's what hackers do. Swift.bank.thereserve.loc for local. And I'm just going to copy this. Should be saved. Okay. And we can ping the web server now. When I would, if I was, I'm not, first guys, I should say again, I know a lot of you have joined. If you're looking for like elite hacker to just run through this, guys, I am not the dude. I am still the noob. I am a pen tester, but I do web apps and I've been a pen tester for like seven months, guys. So I am constantly learning, constantly realizing how much I don't know. So we will, uh, We'll stump through this together. Coke said, shame for not using Vim. Just listen to what I just said, dude. Vim is too elite for me. I'm using my newbie mouse pad over here. <laughs> it's how, we're, how I'm going to do it. I can barely use Nano, dude. You're trying to get me to use Vim. I would spend the rest of the stream trying to exit out. Uh, someone said, but he's done awesome for seven months. We worked together. Oh, sweet. I got uh, a lurker from Rhino. Good to have you here, whoever you are. Okay, let's uh, pull up our notes here. So we have a web server. We have the mail server, and it said we could authenticate to the mail server and see more stuff. But, guys, I am I just want to look at this web server for now. So when I approach a web server like this, especially in a bigger network, I like to make a to-do list. And the reason I like to make a to-do list is it's easy when you see something. Now, this will be especially important for those of you who are studying for the OSCP. So I passed the OSCP back in... I think December is when I first took it. And I made a video on YouTube if you want to see my full experience, how I passed it. But the big thing about the OSCP is enumeration, enumeration, enumeration. And the good thing to do enumeration is having a checklist so that if you do get stuck, fall into a rabbit hole, you can go back at your checklist and see, hey, what have I not checked? What have I not covered? So when it comes to HTTP, a web server, there's a few very basic things that we'll start with, right? The first thing we'll, that we'll do, we'll just call this our to-do list. We'll browse the website, right? Pretty simple, but we're gonna look for, check for usernames, emails, anything that might be used for attacks, especially phishing. There might be some employee information on there. So we're gonna browse the website, we'll check the source code, see if there's anything there. We'll check robots.txt. That's honestly a more CTF-y to have something in robots.txt, but you never know. We will, um, Search for directories. We'll do GoBuster dir search. We do GoBuster for v host as well. A drink of water. We'll run Nikto against it. Nikto is a very basic web vulnerability scanner. It might find something cool for us. It might not, but it's a really easy tool to use. And we'll run those things first. Uh, J Money said use cool. So I don't know how you say cool or sool. Cool is. It creates a custom password list based on the site. That's a good idea. So we'll type in cool there as a note that we can do. But let's go ahead and get some of these scans running. And I always forget the syntax for some of these. I'm open a few more terminals. Just to keep my <coughs> notes organized. I told you guys I have a cold, so apologies for coughing into the microphone. Go Buster. You can see when I was using it last. So you, HTTP. We should be able to grab this. Hunterbot said, what are some things that you thought were CTF-y, but when you did real engagements was actually real? Huh, I don't know if I can really answer that question. <laughs> and the reason for that is like without, especially on live stream, I don't want to accidentally give away any type of like information about a client. And so, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to tell you I can't answer that, at least not live on stream. I'd have to spend a little more time thinking about my thoughts. I don't want to uh, wing it, say something on accident <laughs> that might compromise the identity of a client, if that makes sense. We'll do that. A word list, user share, a word list. We can just use Durbuster. Um, we'll do, like, the medium one. I think that's the correct syntax. Let's see if it works. Beautiful. And we'll call this dir just so we keep our notes organized. And now go buster v host. 
u w user share i think i have cyclists on this box and discovery maybe dns maybe Uh, fierce hostless is what I use on hack the box Academy. So we can try that. We may have to specify a length if they all come back. Let's see what happens right away. Yeah. So on this, there's a few things that we can do. I believe it is, what is it? Exclude length I'm going off memory to filter for that length. I might have that switch wrong. Ah, I had it right. Beautiful. So we'll call that V hosts. Looking over the chat, nothing else. Okay, and let's go ahead and throw Nikto at it, and then we'll just start browsing the website and see what the website's actually like. Nikto-h, SwiftBank, the reserve.loc. And I'll do a very basic web scanner against it, and we'll see what we can find. Okay, the reserve. Welcome to the reserve, Trimental's finest in public and private banking. How can we help you? The reserve is River Bank Trimento, blah, 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 blah. We welcome those from other countries looking for something different. In other words, they welcome the rich people to evade tax and perform tax evasion. Trimento offers a digital nomad ship program that allows those that meet the prerequisites to join our country and embrace a different lifestyle. No need for cubicles in the old nine to five. Why not work from your own private villa looking out over our crisp breaches? Why not use your lunch break for a safari ride? Why not choose working hours that suit you and enjoy your leisure time exploring our world renowned markets? This lifestyle can be yours with support from the reserve. Beautiful. Though. Already finished. One second. Let's give this a bigger word list. And then we'll go back to reading on our website. What do we got here? We got, all right, we're going we're gonna to do this one, big one. Okay. Let's not find anything yet. Oh, found October. Okay. What else do we got here just on this main site? Meet the team. Um, a mute man said it did tell you that the Swift website is internal. So this might just be a different website and not the actual banking app sitting on Trimental's internet. Oh, sure. That is true. <laughs> Bank of Trimental. One second. If I look at this, however, the Swift backend exposes. Oh, I see what you're saying. My Etsy host is wrong. The Swift backend exposes an internal web app there, which the reserve. Oh, I see what you're saying. What I'm on is just a, this isn't okay. Good, good clarification of you, man. The Swift bank, the reserve .loc is internal. It's not probably this web server right here. It's probably something in here. So we'll have to fix our Etsy hosts because I'm running all the scans right now. We'll just leave it like that. But if you're following along this internal website, this domain name right here is actually going to likely be something else in the network because it's not going to be public facing. Good call. Okay. We have our team, right? So we have, gosh, doesn't she look friendly? I wonder where he got these pictures from. Uh, we have Brenda Henderson, bank director. You can see just how friendly she, she looks, like being a bank director. Sounds like a fun job. Which, by the way, guys, these are employee names. And J Money saying cool dash M7 URL. We'll do that. We'll, we'll pull it down. Big Beef said that's probably his mom, dude. <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> Me, man, if it is, I apologize. I apologize. Yeah, J-Money, we'll try that at the end. We'll just look at this manually, and then we'll we'll pull it down with cool. Cool, however you say it. We have deputy directors. We got Leslie Morley. Mar All right. Dude, how can you wear a hat in your bank picture? I used to work at a bank, y'all. They're not that informal. We got Leslie Morley and Martin Savage. We got our corporate executives. Look at these people. We have the CEO, Paula, the CIO, Christopher. He looks like a CIO, the CTO, Anthony, the CMO, Charlene, the COO, Riz, Riz, personal assistance to the executives, Linda. Probably, he is happy, dude. <laughs> I like Roy, 
the project manager. I don't think you get that happy being a project manager. A project manager has to be frustrated in getting the all the pieces of the project to fit together, but he's he's a happy dude. Corporate customer customer investment managers. Just got pictures and many more. Oh, we have their names. See each one of these pictures has a name. Ooh. Ooh, we have oh, I see some really interesting stuff here. A path that we can look at. I'm actually just want to copy this path down so I remember to check it. We'll just drop that in here. Um, but we have all their names there. So that's Emily, Emily Harvey. So even if they don't tell us their names, their names are included. So like that one just called them Roy. We know that he's Roy Sim. So if we can figure out their email, how their emails are set up, and if we look at our own email. I wonder if it's first name dot last name at corp the reserve dot loc. So his would be like Roy dot Sims based on that naming convention right there. I bet so, because look at that naming convention, Linda dot Gordon. I bet those are their emails. And if we log into our email and we try to email them and it doesn't work, we might be able to get it. Other thing I noticed down here is we have Amy Walker and Patrick Edwards are the lead developers at the reserve. So this page has a bunch of usernames that will come in handy later. We will we'll copy those down or we'll try to use cool to copy those down. But for now, we'll just say um, user enumeration there. And we'll even try that command over here. So if we do cool dash M seven and Aldo, I need to just change this. So it's not confusing to people, but remember this isn't the real website for this. It's going to be an internal website. We'll just do it on um, bank dot tax. Does this work? Nope. What did I do wrong? Oh, well, I'll figure that out later. What else do we have in here? A contact us page. Oh, use our friendly to-do list creator to create your list of what to pack for your trip. Once you are ready, send us your CV. Oh, try the full URL. I did. Let's try just the IP. Otherwise, I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep doing my manual stuff. Do 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 do. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> With the meet the team page. Oh, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. So we have some names here. The part that it's not going to get for us this way, though, is all the names included in those pictures. But there's probably some sweet script in Python we could write for that. Like a web scrape type thing to pull all those usernames down. We'll do that. We'll get to that. I want to check this out now. Like So right now, guys, at least the way I approach an assessment. Now, once again, my assessments are limited to web apps. Is I like to initially just kind of browse a website, use it how like a normal user would use it, and just see is there any like business logic that I can exploit? Is there anything that just stands out to me? And then just try it a little bit. Like the when I do uh, legit assessments, my first day is just what I call like my fun day. I just view it as my playground and see like what can I do? What can I do with this? What what might stand out to me? So use our friendly to-do list creator to create your list of what to pack for your trip. Once you're ready, send us your CV and the last three months of banking statements to applications. That sounds like a good place to fish, right? So let's grab that down. And we'll say this. So what is what are they requesting? They want send us your CV, so that means resume. 
you know, so we can maybe send a resume that's like a, whoops, just a doc. Um, I think doc X is a normal one, but basically with macro, we can do some macro fishing, depending on what they have for like AV or how they're going to open it. There's some things we could try there. Drink of water. <clears throat> All right, what needs to be done? So, do I not have Foxy Proxy on this beast? Let's just use Burp's browser. I'll keep it. When I use Foxy Proxy, I always forget to turn it off or turn it on, and then I get annoyed when things don't load. So, we'll just use the internal Burp Proxy to keep things a little bit different. We're just using Community Edition. So, a real assessment, I'd use Pro, but I don't think I have Pro on this VM. So, we're just going to do Community Edition, and that also allows you guys to follow along if you don't have the Pro Edition. So, let's get Burp started up. I have a feeling this might be vulnerable to like cross-site scripting or some injection attack just by looking at this to-do list thingy, but I don't know. And first we need to fix this. Like our precious hacker eyes can't do this light mode craziness. Like why, why would burp a hacking tool default to light mode every time you open it? Doesn't that just seem insane to you guys? My goodness. Open browser. And are these still running? This probably isn't going to find anything. I want to update. Well, let's go like this. If I go. Um, that'll be our public IP. So remember, this is going to be a different web server internal in the network. I just said it wrong in the beginning. We're going to call this the reserve.thm so we stop confusing ourselves. I should be able to ping it now. Yeah, there we go. So. Okay, here's the reserve. Let's get this pulled up. And I'll just show you guys how I like to kind of watch these requests. I usually just like load a page and see like what are we loading. I see we're loading a session. Almost like we're logged in. October CMS demonstration. Uh, this is almost like some type of demo thing. I mean, that stands out to me. So I'm curious. That's a JWT token. If you don't know the JWT token, it's used for authentication. At least it looks like a JWT token to me. Um, what we can do is grab this. Yeah, it is. So you can see this. And if we go to, if we copy this. We'll go back to Firefox, JWT.io, I think is what it's called. Did I copy it in? We have this, what, IV initialization vector or something? I don't know, it probably isn't interesting, but it just stands out to me initially. Let's keep, let's just keep glancing at these requests. Okay. I want to see this contact us page. So if I type like test turn intercept, how, how does this do it? New item equals test. Okay. New items, items, test. Oh, it must code it. Oh, then it just disappears. All right, first of all, I need this side by side. Oh, it looks worse. To do list. Or maybe I'll do it the other way. I can see a little more. Oh, let's just make it big. Sorry, I can't make up my mind. So we have this demo. That's what stands out to me is the demo thing. We have this to-do list and it's passing it. Button type, close, pull right, true. And it's adding it to the list.
and it just keeps all the items together. We have them all here. <laughs> Sorry, only three items are allowed. What a bad to-do list. Psst. Didn't break it. If we do like. Nothing. So I don't think anything. I bet this is vulnerable to something weird. Like some type of cross site scripting. Just the way it's being executed, but. Um, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it because once again, guys, that's the difference between this and the CTF. We have our goal is goal execution. We want to compromise stuff. And gosh, there's just a few different ways to do it. We'll go back to the drawing board in just a second. Over in the chat, you guys see anything cool about this that we should try to exploit? One thing that stands out to me is just this October thing. So this is like a theme, right? Because if we go to meet the team. Okay. No. Hmm. Can we list all the images? Oh, we can. We have directory listing. So we'll want to take note of that. So if we grab that, we'll just go like that and we'll say we have directory listing. And now we have all the usernames, right? All right, here's all of our usernames. We could easily clean that up later. Can I just paste just text? All right, so we have the usernames I was talking about before that I noticed in those images. What's this? Oh. Can we go back to directory? Oh, we can. We have more directory listening. CSS fonts with JavaScript, probably nothing cool. Looking for any like hard coded creds, anything interesting like that. Probably nothing there. We should have looked at this as well. So guys, if this is a real pen test, we would point this out as version um, disclosure, right? You don't want to reveal what version the server is running. I don't think Apache 2.4.29 has any big CVEs. We'll just check that real quick. Request smuggling, that's not gonna help us right now. So make sure there's no like CVE. Attacker to use a path to map URLs. Ah, that'll be a rabbit hole. We don't need to fall down that. Um, Ranger5280 said, Tyler, what are you using for screenshots? I think it's called, you know, what am I using? Lightshot. Lightshot is what it's called. I'll type it in the chat. I used to use the Microsoft snipping tool, but Lightshot's beautiful, and it just maps to your print screen button. Um, works really well. I think it's for Windows, Linux, Mac. I think it's cross-platform. Oh, I need my notes pulled back up. Okay. None of this stuff I don't think is going to be too interesting to us here. Here's our theme, and it's the October theme, right? Let's go back. What's a vendor? We have the bootstrap version, but that's not going to help us. 
Leon says I use flame shot. Is flame shot pretty similar to light shot? I wonder what the difference is. Probably not much. Got some old J query. October CMS. Ooh. That demonstrates a basic core functionality. So we know that we have October CMS. I don't know if that's a real CMS or not. CMS stands for Content Management System. Demonstrates a basic core functionality. Utilizes the accompany demo plugin. It is a great theme to copy when building a site from scratch. This theme acts as a reference, blah, blah. If you clone this theme to use as a starting point, you may follow these instructions to clean up. Delete the theme doesn't combine assets for performance reasons. Ranger just posted October CMS, so it is a real CMS. Beautiful. Let's let's look at that real quick. And guys, these are the things you want to pay attention to in a real assessment or legit on the OSCP. <laughs> so we do have October CMS. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but we will check for exploits for that. Uh, but let's, once again, guys, big overview, right? We don't want to dive into one specific rabbit hole yet. We'll spend a lot of time here um, just doing enumeration. And you know, I didn't even end map scan this beast. I wonder if there's anything else running on here, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. Combine CSS and JavaScript. Combine JavaScript. Make sure you keep the style, scripts, placeholder. Blah, blah, blah. Do I see a version? Hmm. I don't see one yet, but we might come across one. Oh, he posted an exploit. Sweet Ranger, thank you. We'll check it out. A mute man said still a full other two hosts to also look at. It is true. Okay, we know that. None of this other stuff will be interesting to us. That won't be interesting. We have maybe some version information there. Okay. Well, that's the website. I think the main thing that we can take from the website, if we pull up our notes, a possible attack path, if we wanted to go from the website from here, the main information I think that we have is we can say we have some user enumeration and we were able to pull down all the names. We can easily clean this up. So it's just a Christopher.Smith, Emily.Harvey, and I would assume those are valid emails. So we know that that's one attack path. Let's actually type this out. So possible attack pass. We have user enumeration. We had an email. Oh, I never shared the email, obviously. Disguised as a resume. And if we go ahead and grab that, contact us. I think that's burp doing that to us. Oh. Shoot, what did I do? All right, whatever. There it is. It might just be because I have those two things mapped in my Etsy host name. It doesn't like that. Whoops. There we go. And then we have October CMS. And we'll, we don't really have version stuff. I want to, uh, I want to look at these other hosts. We have this VPN server. We don't know if it has a web portal or what it has. If we just grab this IP and go back to our terminal, none of this is probably helpful to us. Petchy remote filing. I think that's a false positive. Output from PHP. Oh, there's really? Ooh. 
that might come in handy. Might also be a rabbit hole, but we have an output from PHP info. On a real assessment, we'd of course want to report that. This is actually one of the first like very minor vulnerabilities I found when I was working IT support at a college. <laughs> I just stumbled across this and I was like, hey, you guys might want to turn this off. Uh, there's probably not not much in here, honestly. We have the host. We have this HTTP cookie that I found interesting. This like seemed to be a session cookie type thing. Oh, I should make note of that as well. There was like a weird session cookie. Probably nothing else here that's going to stand out to us. If you guys see something, let me know, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time looking at this doc. If we need to come back to it, we will. It has a version information type things. And it's 920. Geez, so we've been going for an hour and 20 minutes. We might jump into a five-minute break, guys. And then we will uh, start enumerating the next host. Actually, let's start an in-map scan first, and then we'll... We'll dive into a five minute break. So uh, we'll we'll note this down. Maybe we'll come back to it. Some possible version enumeration. And the next host we want to just spend a little bit of time looking at is this one. And we'll see how far we get. Just make sure we can ping it. Okay, we can ping it. See if I can at least finish this. What I like to do is, oh, we do have a web server running. Run a full port scan against it. Uh, this is probably more on CTS, but even real companies, they'll try to practice security through obscurity, which isn't a good security practice, but they'll run like a port on a on a non-standard port. A new man just told me to extend the network timer. Good call. There we go. Out now it will be good till the end of stream. They'll run something on a non-standard port, and it'll be some high port, and you won't see it with a typical nmap scan. So what I'll often do is I'll do this, and I'll do like nmap full, and then we'll do an nmap targeted scan. This didn't detect anything. And so then we'll do nmap ports 2280. I think that's what it was, so SSH in a web server. Yeah. Dash A for an aggressive scan. Although technically, if this is a red team exercise, we want to be a little quieter. Aggressive scan is going to be picked up by a scanner, but it is a public facing whatever. So I'm sure it gets scanned all the time from the internet if this is the real world. So we might be able to hide in some of that traffic. And that will perform an aggressive scan against that. But guys, it is um, been an hour and 20 minutes. Let's go ahead and take a five minute break. And I will be back. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to pause my stream instead of stopping it. Uh, I can only stop it. Oh, well, YouTube always just yells at me when I have music and then they put ads in the video, uh, but that's fine. Guys, let's take a five minute break. I'll throw on some music for you. I'm going to stand up, walk around a little bit, and we'll be back in five minutes to start enumerating this host a little bit further. Here we go. Trying to crack a smile. I don't need you. I don't need, I don't need you. you. I don't need you telling me it's been a while. I don't need the label breathing down my neck. I don't need the venue telling me it's loud. I don't need you talking when I'm trying to rap. I don't need my name coming out your mouth. I don't need you using me to get respect. I don't need a picture with you for some clout. I don't need you. I don't need you. I don't need you telling me you got some doubt. Worry about yourself. Yeah. I don't need your help. Yeah. What you name? What you name? What you name? Doesn't ring a bell. Every time I look down and your number pops up on the cell. Shake my head, threatening me, trying to get me to respond well. If you really knew me, you would know that that's the quickest way to make me turn my back on you and... I feel like I'm at a standstill Waiting for you to tell me I'm okay If time heals, tell me why do I kill Myself trying to show you I'm not a mistake I've got qualities that I'm not proud of 
I've made promises that I walked out on. I've had days I feel I don't deserve love. So think what you think. Just don't call me a mistake. Might have made some. Can't argue with that, but I ain't one. Even I sometimes get afraid of having to face the wrath of an anxious me. I get it cause I actually feel the same sometimes I think I might be a lost cause who turns off cause the way I read Into what I've been through, you think I'm mental But it pays off though when the rent's due I pursue what I love and if it goes south then falls down Just know I stand on my own two feet Don't you see those that oppose on me Most won't leave thinking I might retreat Show my teeth quick if you turn on me Cause I feel like I'm at a standstill Waiting for you to tell me I'm okay If time heals, tell me why do I kill Myself trying to show you I'm not a mistake I've got qualities that I'm not proud of I've made promises that I walked out on I've had days I feel I don't deserve love So think what you think Just don't call me up Don't call me up Just don't call me up Mistake, cause I'm not one Misplaced, but I found a Lot of resentment causes a mess when you let it get to the place of No confidence, struggle with it, that's obvious But not enough to make me second guess if I die for the ones I love So don't you get confused thinking if you bring me down I'ma just choose to let myself get used I don't live like that, I feel trapped, I might lash out I gotta watch my back, cross my path Especially with ill intent, you'll regret you ever took that task If and when this thing could all go bad Don't you act like no one warned you, yeah, cause I feel like I'm at a standstill Waiting for you to tell me I'm okay If time heals, tell me why do I kill Myself trying to show you I'm not a mistake I've got qualities that I'm not proud of I've made promises that I walk out on I've had days I feel I don't deserve love So think what you think Just don't call me up Boom. And we're back just like that. What's up, everyone? Hopefully you had a good five-minute break. We're going to go for another 30 minutes or so. Probably won't get a foothold or anything, but we are doing some good enumeration, which I think is helpful. And uh, we'll, we'll see where we get to. So if you are just joining us, maybe on YouTube or whatever, we finished kind of enumerating this first public-facing web server. Now we're looking at this VPN. And it is hosting SSH. SSH probably isn't going to be able to be attacked by us and... A web server now what i like to do everybody does this differently but the way i like to organize my notes is i'll post kind of the full nmap scan here on the main page and i'll make sub pages for each one of these services and if we enumerate them or get access that is what we'll do so we'll call this one ssh which is port 22 of course paste that in there make that a sub page and then do the same with this so i'll call port 80 paste it in here for a web server and we'll go like that and kind of the same process as before so if we go to this web server and we go to our to-do list very similar process let's make that a sub page 
let's grab this IP so we have it and let's just kick off our scans against it and then we'll check it out. So if we, here's our vhost, we don't, we'll have to figure out the content link that we need to exclude. But let's go ahead and just run vhost. I, I highly doubt there's gonna be vhost on this if it's just a VPN, probably with the authentication login screen, but you never know. This isn't gonna find anything, I don't think. Same with this, we'll run Nikto against it. Probably won't be anything real cool. And same with GoBuster, and then we'll check out the website. I'm guessing it's just a authentication portal if it is a VPN. But let's check it out. Let's close some of these extra tabs. Whoops, I didn't mean to close. Try hack me. Let's get try hack me open back up. I was right. VPN portal login. No, your internal account should be used. So. Hello, login failed. Please check your username or password. And it's passing our parameters right there, which that's a no, no, right? You don't want to pass your password in the, in the URL. So if we we're doing this for a real client, we'd maybe point that out to them like, hey, not a good idea. I'm curious if we can perform username enumeration. So if we pick a user that probably has an account, login failed, your internal account should be used. So if we get some creds, we could check this out. Is there anything in the page source? Oh, the email is the user, oh, ID. User play, enter user. So if I do Linda Gordon at, what was the corp.reserve.loc? Oh my goodness. Whatever. <laughs> I'll just copy the whole thing. What's that do? Submit. Okay, no, we can't. So what I was checking, if you're wondering what I'm doing, sometimes an authentication portal like this will provide you with username enumeration. So for example, if we had a valid user, but an incorrect password, it will tell us wrong password. And then we know, hey, we do have a valid user, or I doubt it's this way, but sometimes you can actually figure out whether or not the user is valid based on response time. So if you use something like Burt Professional, and you try to submit a bunch of false logins with a correct login to a web portal like this, and you can actually look at the response time. And sometimes you'll notice a pretty big difference in response time between a valid user and an invalid user. And then although the error message might be the same, it might be generic, you can still assume, hey, I know which users are valid and which users aren't valid for kind of a brute force attack. I'm assuming this is a valid user and that is their email, but there's not much more we can do with this. I, that's not going to find anything. Nick though, isn't going to find anything. I doubt Derby's not going to found VPN, which is redirection. Oh my goodness. What is this? Oh, we have an open VPN file. Well, would you look at that? We might be able to connect then. And we'll want to take this down for our notes. So let's go to VPN and we'll just say We'll drop the link to it there. Mousepad, because I'm not lead enough for Vim, and we'll just call it corp username.ovpn.
Oh, I need to fix that. It just can't resolve the host, of course. We just need to edit that. So right there, which is, what are we, 113, 200, right? I think. One, or 113, I mean. So 113, 12, maybe? Should be connected to the VPN server 113, 12. I don't know if that'd be right. So do we have it? Is that it right there? Our ton zero? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Did we just get access to the internal network with this VPN? Oh, I think we did. Okay. There's a few things we could do now. So we know that that is our IP. So we know that's going to be the internal network. Grab this. Uh, I'm trying to think of the way I want to organize my notes. So if we do like like that, an internal network. Like that. And now we could do find other hosts can we just do in map here let's act, let's go like this let's pull up chat gpt a meme man said you have something you just need to figure out what you have i have a v some type of vpn file <laughs> that i have access to on ton zero um, looking at amoeba man he's giving us some hints over in the chat like, what does a VPN actually do? Think about it in the context of your capstone VPN. How does that work? What does it do? Read the text. Because you might scan something and get into trouble. Oh, so slow steps is the way to go here. Ah, I see. So my capstone VPN gives me access to... course this internal or this network on try hack me and now we found this corp username vpn read the output when you run the capstone vpn Read those long lines. Don't be shy. I got to read them out loud. No, Cypher is not set up in VPN versions 2 before 2.5 defaulted to BFCB. Hold up. Oh, it's the same thing. If you need this fallback, blah, blah. Cypher is not supported. Open VPN 2.6.1. I'm just going to see if there's anything different between the two. Library versions open SSL 3.087. Used... Validating certificate extended key usage. Certificate has EQU, TLS, web authentication. 
Oh man, someone's raiding with a party of 45. Welcome 45 people. Oh my goodness, 100 some people. What's up everyone? Welcome to my stream, y'all. Good to have you here. You can help me not be a noob, guys. I don't know if any of you have looked at the Try Hack Me Red Team Capstone Network, but that's what we are working on. We found uh we found an open VPN file, this corp username at OVPN. And a meme man told me, don't start scanning stuff, you're going to get in trouble. So we're trying to figure out, like, <laughs> what this is going to show us. We have we have this guy right here that I thought would maybe. So my initial thinking is that, hey, I have this VPN. Now I have access to their internal network, and I'm just going to scan for what hosts are alive in the internal network was kind of my plan. But. He told me not to do that. Oh, I see. Net route ad. I think I'd see what I'm missing. This is the this these are the networks right here. Those are the two things that we have access to. I don't know why I didn't see that before. Right? Because if you look at this, this is our IP, but this is what we're getting access to is this network right here, this 24 network. Same with this one right here. This is our IP that we just been assigned. And this IP allows us to act these access these two machines, these dot twenty one and dot twenty two, which if you look over here, they're not part of the external facing network. So these are machines somewhere in this internal network. One of these is a dot twenty one, one of these is a dot twenty two. I'm pretty sure that's what Amoeba Man was saying. That's what we have access to. So let's go ahead and record this information. Grab this from Inmap, and we don't know what these are, so we're just gonna drop the IPs in here for now. There we go. Um, he said 12100 actually exists on the internet. If you scan 12, is that like the EC2 or something? <laughs> You'll scan the internet. Sadly, it's a ban in the challenge based on assessment scope. Well, thanks for catching me, you man. <laughs> I get banned on my first first try hack me stream. That would be amazing. Um, but yeah, I think this is what it is, right? So this is our IP, of course, but it's giving us access to these two machines right here. So let's let's just start very simple. Can we ping the machines? He said, no, it belongs to someone else. No clue who, though. Someone in the U.S. <laughs> Almost broke the law there, guys. Well... I mean, oh, VPNs? There's a plural VPNs? VPN files will be stored here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wish they were there. But we do have VPN. Um, distracting myself by looking at scan results. Let's start simple. Let's start with this one. Can we ping it? It's going to be the question. What's this doing, Nikto? We can stop that. And it may not accept pings if it's a Windows host. So Windows Firewall, by default, will stop those pings. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's not alive if we can't ping it. Let's try nmap-p 10.200.113.21-pn, which I mean just ignore host discovery and just assume the host is alive. And let's see if we have anything. Oh, it is a Windows machine. I can tell by the first part that comes back. This is some type of server. Ooh. Cool, cool. What's this one? Yeah, we got... RDP, SSH, SMB. Might be some juicy stuff on these ones. And let's rename this. I like organization, if you guys can't tell by now. And we have similar stuff here. Might be a workstation of some sort or a jump box of some sort. Uh, let's do a targeted scan. 
gosh, I'm glad I did this jur. I wasn't even going to do this because I was like, it's a VPN. What does it have on there? I'm um, glad I did that. So we see these different ports open there. Yeah, these are one of the hosts. So we're on the internal network now. At least these are two hosts on the internal network. These ones are not public facing. So if we just, I'm just going to jot. Actually, let's open these notes here. We'll keep it in my VM. So we're going to do like inmap dash P 139, 22, 135, 445, 3389 dash A for an aggressive scan 10 dot. 200 dot pn v and i think it's the same ports here and what i'm doing guys you could use auto recon to speed this process up um i just do it manually i don't know why but it worked for me on the oscp and so that's how i do it on these machines too and i know i can also output it to a file but i once again i just like to copy it into my one note for good or for bad. But while those, I doubt those are gonna find other ports, but while they run, we'll start doing a more targeted scan. I wonder if that's gonna find anything. Like that. And we'll do it again to the other one. Uh, Miva Man said, interesting how all three streams thus far had a completely different path taken. That is cool. So I did find the third path. I told Amiba Man before I started, the third path was going to be me hacking his real email and figuring out the the entryway. But this this instead was my third path. Although I almost got banned from the challenge by scanning a real IP out on the internet. I thought maybe you guys were hosting something like an EC2. But okay. We'll give these a little bit to return. I doubt these are gonna find anything else. These are probably just gonna run. I bet these are just the ports that are open on here. It looks like some type of workstation based on what's open. And you know, we could. there's a few other things we can do because we already know the ports on some of these. Uh, we know what services are running. I'm honestly just gonna stop. I doubt there's more. I don't wanna miss something though. All right, we'll go like that. I don't know if my syntax is right here. 10.200.113.22. Oops. Okay, so we, when I'm checking now, guys, if I can list stuff on the SMB anonymously, but we're getting NT status access denied, so we can't probably list stuff on these workstations. Okay, so one of our or both of our targeted scans are done. So let's check out this information that got back. So this is for, let's close these out. Uh, which IP is this? 21, okay. All right, let's get our notes organized. This is 21 right here. We'll drop in our in-map results and I'll show you guys how I do notes. This is SMB. All that stuff has to do with SMB, so I'm gonna move this up. Okay, so we have SSH. Twenty two. Keep our notes organized. Make that a sub page. And we'll just call all of this SMB. Oh, come on. and then RDP. And then we'll look at each one of these results and see if we can figure out what this is being used for. Okay, so RDP, we have what appears to be a workstation. So we have a name right here for it, work one. So we can actually update this.
We have that, so we know it's a workstation because we have work one, at least I'm assuming that's a workstation, and it would make sense to have RDP open on a workstation and expose only internally, of course, because we are on the internal network with the VPN file that we discovered. So that stands out to me, SMB. We have message signing enabled but not required. We might be able to abuse that later. SSH, that's probably not gonna be vulnerable to anything. Let's check out our other results real quick. Did I not? Oh, shoot. Did I did I close the scan I did for the other one? Oh, I'm dumb. I must have closed it. Silly me. We'll run that one. This might be like workstation two or something, I'd assume. Can't SSH. SMB is here. And what I'll often do, guys, is to make a to-do list for this. I have some of my own notes, but you know who makes better notes than me? Hacktrix. <laughs> All right, so here's what we have access to. This explains what it is. Server enumeration, so we don't need to do that. T Sturge said, I love the way he formats my notes, but I can't get my OneNote to look like that. To look like what? I don't do any, I don't have anything special. I use no plugins. It's about as plain Jane as it can be. We have, here that's done now. Possible creds, attain inform. Oh, Enum for Linux. We could try Enum for Linux against these, these hosts. We'll put that as a to-do list and we're we'll gonna jump back over here now and check out these results. So same thing, let's copy, add to our notes. Kind of the boring stuff, but this is having good note taking still guys is what, what pays off in the end, in my opinion. And I'm sure there's better ways of doing this, faster ways of doing it. If you guys know them, I'd love to hear them, but I've known it's also really hard to break my own habits. I've tried using other note taking things and I always just come back to one note just because I'm used to it. But curious for those of you in chat, what do you guys use for note taking? Does anyone else use one note like me or am I the only one note noob here? One thirty five, one thirty nine, four four five. Cardi Box said I'm Obsidian. Obsidian. Obsidian's cool because some of the, the coding stuff there is. OneNote, OneNote. T-Search said Face Palm. There's two different OneNotes. <laughs> That's true. A lot. Oh, more people use OneNote than I thought. I thought I was, I thought most like you hacker people use cooler things. And I was like this weird, strange dude using, using OneNote. Glad I am not alone in my OneNote usage. I just like the way things are organized. And I mean, I have all my notes throughout here. Um, okay, so I was right. We have Workstation 2 is what this guy is or gal. I don't know whose workstation it is. Visual Studio Co. with markup. Dude, you're the, or ma'am. You're the real hacker, Neon Resin. I've actually used Visual Studio Code a little bit for note taking, but usually just like on the spot note taking. Kind of like how I use whatever this is, mouse pad. I'll use code for that. I like the way code looks, but. All right, so similar stuff open on both machines. I'm guessing we'll get the same results on SMB. One thing that we can do Oh, man, I'm getting tired now that we're like almost two hours in. We're going to go, guys, until the top of the hour, and then we'll call it a night. But like I said, I'll be back on tomorrow night. I'll share more information about that as it gets. And we could, let's see. So if we get username and password, we can do that. Um, I want to see if a Noom for Linux is going to work at all on these hosts. I'm just curious.
I'll just run it full on both of these. What is this doing? Oh, this is my full scan. Amoeba Man said, might be time to dust off your massive AD chart. Oh, sweet. Are we at the AD hacking part? All right. Let's let's pull up let's pull up my AD hacking tools. I'll show you guys what Amoeba Man's referring to. Um I've actually expanded my AD hacking stuff. Let me look through here real quick. Uh did I include it here? Here's my full Hack the Box Academy path on AD. My AD lab. Is it my hacking guide? I'm telling you guys, I've taken notes on all this. Here's all my Windows enumeration, Linux enumeration, Active Directory. Here's the attack map. You guys are going to be blown away. Are you ready? You've never seen this. See this? You guys see the beauty? Just kidding. We need to zoom out. <laughs> this is Orange Cyber Defense. Shout out to you, Orange Cyber Defense. Let's see who made it. Who's who's who do we owe credit to? Mayfly, Viking, and Santo Ru, or whoever you are. Thank you for this. Thank you, Orange Cyber Defense. Some commands can break stuff. Be sure to know what you're doing. Yeah, good idea. So, pen testing Active Directory. Oh man, this might be a good spot to pick up in our next stream. We're starting out with no creds, right? So we can scan the network, find the domain controller IP, try zone transfers if we figure out the DNS, this guest access. That's what I was trying to do initially was guest access stuff. Enumerate LDAP, find a user list, do some poisoning. Oh, I wonder if poisoning would work on here and coerce petite patam or whatever it is. Um, this is where we're going to pick up off, off of. I think this is a good ending point since we're about two hours into the stream, but I got like 70 people on here, guys. Thank you seriously for hanging out with me. I'm going to self promote myself real quick before I sign off. I'm going to get my YouTube channel pulled up. What this is used for my Twitch right here is really just for my live streaming. My main platform actually is YouTube. On YouTube is where I post all my live streams when I'm done, but also just other videos as I make them about pen testing and hacking. So I just dropped my YouTube over in the chat. Would really appreciate if you guys came to my YouTube page, subscribed and followed me on there. And all my streams that I work through, even when I'm not doing the try hack me stuff, this is exactly how I do my stream. So a lot of content creators I shared before, they solve a box, then they go back through it in like 10 minutes. And you're like, how the heck did they come to that? When I do this, guys, I, I'm first reaction everything. I'm learning as I go. I'm stumbling through it. I do not solve the boxes ahead of time than to show you in 10 minutes how to solve them. We'll sometimes spend like four streams on one box as we struggle our way through it. So this is how I create content. Really do appreciate all you guys hanging out here. So once again, I drop my YouTube over in the Twitch chat. Would appreciate a subscribe and a follow on there. Otherwise, my plan, if I am able, is to stream every single night throughout this challenge. Now, I really say if I am able because I have uh, two young kids. So like I work all day, then I usually go outside, hang out with them and then put them to bed and then I'm on stream. And so my start time can be a little bit buggy because it's whenever I can get my kids to bed. But I will say this, I, I think I can for sure say that I'll be live at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So I'll just drop that in the chat as well. Around 8 o'clock, 8.30 p.m. Central Time and we'll go for you know, an hour and a half to two hours each time. Just depends how tired I get. We're at two hours right now. But every single night, guys, come back, 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and we are going to continue to work our way through this network. And tomorrow night, we're going to pick up where we left off by attacking Active Directory. We have two workstations on the internal network. And I would say, um, I know I'm rating myself on this, so a little bit uh, weird, but I think I think guys, we can pat ourselves on the back. The Hack Smarter Security Group did a decent job. 
Uh, we enumerated some internet facing machines. We found a VPN file. We stopped getting banned from Try Hack Me thanks to Amoeba Man's help for telling me to pay a little bit closer attention to what I'm looking at. And we gained access to the internal network. So we have, in our first stream, we have breached the perimeter. We have two workstations we have access to. And we're going to see if we can compromise these workstations. We'll see if we can enumerate the network. Maybe we'll drop some sweet username stuff. I don't know what we're going to do. We'll figure it out in the next stream. So, guys, thank you for hanging out with me. Really do appreciate it. And I will catch you guys, hopefully, tomorrow night. I'll see you guys then. Peace.